bi-week edition of the KSO Show here inside of Tallgrass Tap House. This podcast is brought to you by Legacy Insurance and People State Bank. Two great places that I know Dale has enjoyed our, our short, but it's going to be fruitful time with them. I'll tell you one thing about them. Uh, that I can say with total sincerity is they're fantastic communicators. They're very polite. I'm a bit, I'm big on like responding to every email to the point of it becoming like a nice off towards how many times <laughs> can somebody say thank you? I appreciate it. Yeah. And they're good at that too. But before we get going to this Q and A, I want to ask, I want to ask Logan a question yes. who we've got here today running the Logan board Nance. again. Because man, and I do it too. Like I wrote, I wrote bi week Q and A. I do that stuff. It really bugs me though. You know, I make a mistake. It's not a, it's not a bi week. I mean, I know what even on the schedule it says like yeah. a bi. By definition, right, is like advancing to the next round, like a, you know, it's a, a just off week. All right. Do you yeah. agree with this, or do you like the term "bye"? I guess I didn't ask a question. It's like, are you okay with the term "bye week," or am I just being difficult about it? It should be called something else. I think it's "bye week." Well, he likes it. But then, why, why, why would uh, the NFL have bye weeks that well, have nothing like, to do with? Yeah, I don't you like probably don't like that see, either. You, dude. Earn, you earn a bye in the you know in the NFL playoffs by winning your division or that kind of stuff. That's a buy, or you get a first round buy, or whatever that kind of stuff. Like that means you advance automatically to the next round. Like you get a free win, basically, is what I see a buy as. You know, it's just an off week. I, 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 mean, I don't see why you can't use any terms. Uh, I mean, because <laughs> I mean, you're probably right, but I mean, just because just because I wanted to have something to argue about to start the show, and I wanted to show a little. I'm going to show some. I'm going to be a little more exciting today. I feel like I've been too like uptight and straight on these podcasts. You know. It's time to just Ooh, take some guesses at things and, and be ridiculous, a right? Ridiculous Dale, I love right. it. I had a Pepsi and a half. Like, <laughs> that's not code. I've had a Pepsi and a half. I feel like a little more, then, a little, a little more pep in your step after yeah. Pepsi rather than coffee. Yeah, I mean, I've been having the coffee here uh, for a while, which I think is really good. I'm not going to say what the waitress told me about it here last week because I may not <laughs> help them sell it. She was just very nice. She wasn't saying anything gross, but she didn't really sell it to me. So now Pepsi, and I also appreciate Logan having uh, brand loyalty. Because he's like, hey, can I get a Coke? And she says, Pepsi okay? And he's like, I'll have a walk. <laughs> I mean, I think, not, yeah. I think got a Dr. Pepper, but. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm having a beer. So uh, the, the lone drinker right now on the podcast, no no, uh, no Scotty, Scotty McFarland. No uh, shots. I just said uh, no interns could uh, drink, so <laughs> oh, I want to order something. <laughs> yes, get drunk. No. All right, no. so let's, ta- let's, let's start this Q&A off. Uh, the first one is by Shu, mm-hmm. which he asks how uh, the timeline of the South End Zone project, which TX has a great post on this. A I saw. Later. I saw. Okay, true. All true stories. I saw that question. I think TX is going to walk in here in any second. Ooh, he's always going to be here tonight. Um, got to get him. We got to get him um, on the mic. <laughs> I saw that question. I thought, man, I'm going to have to like, and I, but I, I like, I don't know the answer. But I'm like, I'm going to do the research. I'm going to pull everything up. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to give a good answer to this question because it's the first question. Shu's a nice guy. Yes, he's. Some nice DMs. He deserves a good answer. But fortunately, you can just read it off. Yeah, later. it's right T- here. I got it. Oh, read it right now. Yeah, yeah, TX says starting construction after basketball season this year and will be completed for the start of the 2021 football season. Bam, one for one. I know. I, I mean, yeah, you and TX can take. You guys are a teammate. Right? I got. Yeah, I got a question to add on. To oh that. no, I thought I was through with that question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Will you ever get tired of the construction? Because I know, like, the soccer <laughs> stadium and the baseball stadiums under construction. No. It kind of annoys me a little well, bit. Well, it I'm does pre- to an extent. I mean, the the town construction in general does. You know, <laughs> oh, and you're right. You do always drive by and notice it's always under construction. But I'm just like, oh, I don't know. It means progress or something. But I mean, now that you brought it up. No, I'm not annoyed by it because you think "buy" is a fine term, uh, is a fine term. <laughs> so I think it's great that they're always doing construction. I love it. <laughs> even, on, even on Manhattan Avenue, a whole grudges. Even, yeah, they could. Ugh. They could. Yeah. Uh, Next, give me another one. Another one is from KSU Fellas. He says speed round here. Okay, okay. so quick answers. First one is Skyler went down. Big if on that. Uh-huh. If he went down, why does he want that to happen? <laughs> who do you want under center right now? Down three with four minutes left to go. Who do I want under center right now, down three? Uh, John Holcomb. And I think I'm a big Nick Ost guy. I have nothing but praise for him. But, you know, if I'm trying to win a game and i got to get a drive together to go win it, Nick Ost had a touchdown drive in his only dri- real drive of the year against Bowling Green. Uh, you know, a, a time when they were, the game was still relatively competitive. So he's played well, but I'd take John Holcomb. I think if you're trying to throw a Hail Mary at the end, right. I think you right. John Holcomb. That's who you want. I saw him in the – Bowling Green game, and he almost threw the ball out of the stadium. It like almost hit the gator in the tunnel. <laughs> it, it, he said in the post game he was it was an intentional overthrow, and I don't want to I don't want to say that's not true because he sounded really sincere. But it's a weird way to do it, you know. Yeah. 
Next, uh, she's got two more questions in this speed round, which seems to be going pretty slow okay, so far. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Player most likely to go into the 2021 NFL draft, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to be, we'll be in the 20, uh, 2019, so it'll be like a sophomore. Oh, Wyatt Huber. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's the easy, yeah, quick Huber. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Another one, another interesting answer right there is why Hubert the obvious one to go with there. Yeah, obvious. Which recruit not committed elsewhere is as close to a must-have as it gets? Which recruit not committed elsewhere? Boy, I mean, there's not one guy on the board, and I know what he's asking. Uh, I'll, I'll say Parker Clemens. I mean, another offensive tackle. He's not the highest-rated kid yet they could get. There's other ones you could argue for, but Parker Clemens, offensive tackle. Uh, I think it's hard to find good high school tackles right now. That's a great answer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, are you a cat fan? It's kind of a – I like – Oh, that's their name. Yeah. That was a question. I was going to say, <laughs> yes. <laughs> are you a cat fan says, wish I could be in God's country to have a beer with you guys, but I will be at the Derby, Derby game tonight, which oh, yeah, brings me to my question, how much time do you think the coaches will put into trying to flip players such as Khan from Derby? I know you have no idea, but as a guess, what do you think? I have some idea. I mean, with Alex Kahn specifically, I would say no effort. I don't think they're interested in pursuing him. Not that they wouldn't take him. He's a good player. They wanted him. But I don't think there's conversation there still. Um, but with other guys, you know, um, and just saying these names doesn't mean that they're actively, com you know, recruiting these guys. But, you know, the Urseries at Minnesota, Turner Corcoran, Kai Thomas, Daniel Jackson, whoever – like, they're talking to those kids like they would a an uncommitted prospect elsewhere. So they're spending a lot of time on it. Um, whether or not they get any, I don't know, but they're very active in still doing that. But but uh, Khan, specifically at Derby, I don't know that there's anything going on with. In fact, I guess there's not. <laughs> there you Are go. you a cat fan? Getting Dale to be a yeah. little more serious. Yeah, I, yeah so far, I told you I'm going to be good on this. I'm, I know, I'm you gonna, are. I'm going to say stuff. Be very good. AMS3399 uh, asks, how much fun is it for K-State football to be fun again? We haven't lost our phys physical, unique style, but we aren't, like, watching paint dry. I don't know how to answer this. I mean, I, I think it's one of those things where I'd be curious what you guys say. I, I don't know. I don't know that it's um, it's, all, it's all, like, settled in for me yet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not that this is some, you know, some life-changing experience <laughs> that I can't. I'm not trying to pretend it's more than a football game because it is just football. But I still don't know that I've really um, – What's the word? Like, it's all sunk in yet. Yeah. You know, I'm still kind of treating it like I thought they were before the season, like it was the last couple of years, and it's just a job and that kind of stuff. But I still know in the back of my mind, like, I can tell it feels way different and yeah. way more fun. But I'm almost trying to ignore it. Um, so it, it's a fun question because I, I don't know that it's changed a lot for me yet, but when I slow down and think about it, I know it's different. Yeah. Yeah. I would say in 2014 or 12, 2012, when we were really good yep. with Bill Snyder, everyone was having fun. And I think we're just having more fun because yeah. it's a different product. I think if Bill Snyder went, what, 12 won one this year, we'd be having fun. So. Yeah. Of course. Winning's, yeah. Winning's no fun. doubt. No doubt. You yeah, know, that's, I mean, I've been a little less, you know, trying to ignore it. And it's been, it's been fun for me, you know, yeah. like going down to Mississippi, not thinking, you know, we picked the game. The young don't, Bucks yeah, picked the don't game. You guys, say, oh, <laughs> think we're gonna win. I mean, but I, I, one of my favorite moments of being in the car riding back was seeing the tweet from Logan. Yeah, I know that was. Just, <laughs> and, uh, I knew it was, it was coming. Those, and it was one of those. Yeah, I did. It's, I didn't. I did. And it was one of those things that like so much was happening, and I was. I'll be honest, yep. I was really happy. You uh -huh. know, like that stuff was kind of just whizzing by me, and I wasn't quite getting it. Yep. You know what I mean? Because there were so many things you're scrolling through. Like that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I thought that's awesome. Then I slowed down. So wait a minute, those two did. Yeah. You know, on the podcast, say that. <laughs> I mean, Derek said over here and said, well. You know, Mississippi State's really good. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I should have been prepared for it. I wasn't, but I loved I loved seeing it. Well, and then on the way down there, you heard me starting to start to backtrack. Well, I don't know. So, you, know you were backtracking hard. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I was, you were saying, well, I still, you know, the injuries are – and I'm like, you're right. Logan, when you <laughs> were right. around, he bailed off the Young Buck team so fast. Oh, no, I mean, he, you know what? Yeah. It's still on air. I wasn't on air saying – Doesn't count. Yeah, it right. doesn't count. So – but but then once 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 they beat Mississippi State and after the game and just like the excitement after that it was just you know I know it was just super fun to be around it, it was just, I you, mean it's not did, I'm you, not, did you ever backtrack during the game Oh yeah I mean, that, <laughs> I mean was, I, I'll, I'll tell you who backtracked during the game or four-tracked and backtracked and four-tracked <laughs> again and he'll listen to this was Derek Young and, and I'm just I, I love Derek as a friend and he's incredibly intelligent so I give him I give him this guff in a because I think he's so good I can do it. Oh yeah. But I mean like he likes K State, you know, yeah. and so yeah. he was excited when how the game was going and he was <laughs> all about it and then went bad and he's like, Oh, it's over, yeah. you know what I mean? So 
Derek loves Kansas State, he, yeah. but he covers it you know, professionally and does a good job with it. Um, but he was back and forth yeah. for sure during that game. It's going to be a thing that's so, still going to yeah. be fun, even if they start losing some games. Because, yeah, they've got th- yeah. The 3-0 and didn't expect that out of the gate. And, yeah, even if they end up 6-6 six and six at the end of the year, Still going to be a fun season right. and a, a successful one in my so eyes. So six and six is your prediction. Yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not yeah. anymore. It used to be. Um, KSU Burke fifty four. Uh huh. He's out here asking, uh, who has surprised you the most with their play on offense and defense from last season? Oh, that's good. Because I was going to swell. The defense is easy. It's Jordan Mitty. Um, I thought Jordan Mitty was was average to just a guy. To, I'll be real honest. I didn't think he was particularly good. You know. It's in a relative sense. The yeah. guy's obviously a Big 12 football player, and he's a very good football player. But I mean, from a relative sense, I didn't think he was a particularly good Big 12 defensive tackle. And now, I mean, I'm not sure that he hadn't been the best defensive tackle on the team this year, better than Trey Deshaun. And if I wanted to get in a big argument about him being the best defensive player on the team this year, I probably could. I mean, so I don't know that I believe that he is, but I think he's in that discussion. So that's easy. Jordan Mitty on defense. On offense, um... I mean, these guys were these guys were good, but I mean, a guy like Adam Holtorf to me was a good player last year, but now he looks kind of like a like a mean like mauler type on the field, who's yeah. kind of nasty, and you know I didn't see that last year, so I, I thought he was a good player last year. And you can say the same thing about Tyler Mitchell. You could probably say the, throw the same thing on, you know, another other guys who played in the offensive line last year. But I would say I thought he was good last year, but Adam Holtorf on offense. I thought uh, Skylar Thompson would be a good. He, I just thought he was okay quarterback. Uh-huh. Oh, we got a Skyler hater. How about that? <laughs> yeah. How about that? I know, I know. Last year, yeah. he was an okay oh, yeah. quarterback, and he's, his decision making, and I feel like the play calling this year more fits his what he wants to do. Right. They were running the ball with him too much last year. I felt like, and he got banged up, and obviously him with Alex Delton was kind of a tough issue for him. So I think he's one on the offensive end, and Denzel Goolsby, I feel yeah. like he's made a huge jump this year. I think Skylar Thompson is probably technically the right answer because, I mean, whatever stat you want to look at, you know, pro football focus or QBR or whatever, everybody in the world has him as, you know, the number one quarterback. Not that he's the best, but statistically, you know, has had the best season. So, yeah, you go from a guy who was battling to be a starter last year to yep. be in that. He's yep. pro- it's probably Skylar Thompson. But, yeah. see, I always, unlike Logan, I always believe in Skylar Thompson. You know, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not a surprise to this observer. I always you know? have believed in his ability, but – yeah. They share but the fit for him yeah. and everything. Absolutely. I think just one other guy I'd point out on the defensive end, I can't really think of another one on offense. I think you guys covered that. But uh, Daquan Patton's no a guy who I think has stepped up from a year ago where we were like, is this guy really a starter Absolutely. for K-State? Whereas I think the injury was a big part of the reason he played the way he did last year. Right. And just I think he's also, yeah, more comfortable with this system and uh, how things are run. So He'd be number two for me. Yeah, another guy who I was – Pretty openly critical of his play last year, yeah. and I've said this a bunch. Never had a problem with Daquan Patton. I just didn't think he was a great player last year. Uh, he has been a very good player through three games this year, and all that stuff I said about him last year, that's not who he is right now. <laughs> so it doesn't been, matter. You I know? think you've been pretty critical of the whole linebacking crew. Probably. <laughs> probably. I mean, they've they, only been really good. I, I mean, know. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> Talk about Daniel Green, too. Not a guy that's know. stepped on the field very much, if at all, last year. I don't know. No, not at yeah, all. And yeah, and this year he's, he's played really well. But he was on the roster, so you could argue Daniel Green. Yeah, you could. You know? but. Yeah. Um, what would this is still from KSU Berg? He's got a couple more after this. What would your dream uniform combination and logo look like? Logo, I mean, that's t- I mean, oh man, that's tough. I mean, I like the Power Cat. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily change it. But yeah, I mean, if it were me, I would love to see some alternates with with different stuff on them. I mean, I would probably be relatively simple. I'd probably say a white helmet, white pants, purple jersey, jersey, pretty much as is. And if I'm thinking old logos. Man, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a sucker for like the late, like late '80s, and it's a basketball logo more than anything. But it was the logo at midfield. I think before, the year before Snyder got there, like the big hairy cat head yep. that looks super generic, like everybody else's wildcat uh-huh. that I associate with K State basketball in that era. Uh, throw that on there for one. I like that helmet. Or I like that logo. See, I don't like the uniforms that go over the top, like the Oregon's. I right. Don't, like some of their unis are good, but. And then the KU unis, I feel like they go a little bit over the top. I do, too. Like, the two-tone helmet and everything, I yeah. didn't like that. Yeah. yeah. So, something pretty standard, but, like, mix it up. I don't really know how to put this, but. I'm going to go all white. And I, and I know I'm going to switch it up from something I talked about in the car with Dale and DY on the way back. But a matte purple power cat on the helmet, That'd on a white really nice. helmet, with the 
maybe not even any stripes. I'm trying to think about, about it out loud right now. But then all white throughout on the, the uh, uniform, so white pants, white jersey, and then purple numbers. Yeah. And, yeah, I think that'd be – I don't know. I like the Stormtrooper look a lot. So. And I kind of like the powder purple – Maybe the lavender? Cool. Yeah. Lavender. Yeah. Lavender. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen, I've seen, I don't want to not give the right credit, but I know on Twitter, I think it's Stanimals, the Twitter account. Uh, I've seen some that I really like. I know, I know lavender could look bad on a jersey. I understand that. I've seen some that I really like. Yeah. So I think it can be done. I think yeah. it could too. Um, he's got a couple more here. Favorite item on the menu at Tallgrass? Uh, I tell you what. What I ordered today was the bacon uh, jalapeno... Uh, what do they call them? The, the pepper uh, things? That yeah, they let me read the menu here. Let me look at this. That's yeah, you might as well. Menu. We're here at Tall I don't want to get it wrong. So it's a very good question from... Uh, I had the from jalapeno Berkeley. popper crab rangoon. I think that was really good. We order the fried chicken sandwich more than anything, but I'm not sure that the pretzel is not the best thing on the menu. It might be. Fried I will say the sandwich. pretzel. I'll say the pretzel. You eat here a bunch, Logan? I haven't ate here much, but last time... Last podcast, whatever you guys got looked pretty good. Uh, right, chicken like, sandwich. Well, you know, you guys got, we got something fancy. The, you, got, you got the Philly cheese steak. You got the cheese yeah, steak sandwich. Yeah, that pretty good. Yeah. But I almost, honestly think the fried chicken sandwich might beat that. But also, I mean, I've never had it, but I mean, it you, looked good. There's it looked a lot good. of options really that you'll have to go through and See, I try. thought you guys weren't coming today, so I thought I was going to get an expensive thing. Like, well, I, I mean, you guys, I got here early and you guys didn't come or whatever because you guys don't like me. What'd you get there? Well, I only got, I told you what I got like yeah. eight seconds ago. I got I the jalapeno, whatever, but That's, I was going to get the, the steak, uh, the fancy steak down you here. You should have. Yeah, so yeah, instead, I you I only spent it. 10 bucks of it. Right, correct. And now, yeah, we get to Now you guys got the steak, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but the Tap Mac is also really good, too. You get some, yeah. get some, uh, some seafood in there. Good stuff at Tallgrass. Casey Burke, 54. He finishes out us, or he's got a couple more. Weekend Big 12 picks. So, UL Monroe at Iowa State. We'll start with that. Iowa State. Wrap it around. Iowa, Iowa State. State. Iowa State. <laughs> SMU at TCU. 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 TCU it is. Listen to us being the same. West Virginia at KU. West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia. West Virginia. I mean, yeah. Baylor at Rice. Rice has got a. Baylor. Baylor. Rice. Oh, <laughs> didn't Texas just play at Rice? Well, they yeah, played it. They played it in our That's not where Rice plays their home game, is it? Like in our, the Houston so. Texans stadium. Uh, no. That's where they played that game. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Rice plays all their games there, and I'm just maybe. Dumb, I don't but, know either. But I think we're doing good. Yeah, yeah. we're doing great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Baylor. Uh, last one: Oklahoma State at Texas. Texas. I want Okie State to win, but Texas. Uh, I'll go Texas. Yeah, I gotta go Texas here Three, too. Texas. Um, so it looks like OU's the only other team in the Big Twelve on a bye or on a, a week uh, off. Or is there any other? I mean, teams? I didn't hear you say Texas Tech. Texas Tech I didn't, got a I week didn't hear off. You say who else didn't I say? Uh, you might have got them that's all. That's it, right? That. Yeah. Texas Tech the and Baylor, OU. TCU, KU, KU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, is the Big Twelve wide open this year, or is it just OU and Texas at the top and everyone else? OU and Texas at the top and everyone else. I'd go the same. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, it's hard to argue that. Well, yeah, whereas everyone else, you, yeah, it's completely up in the air. Who's that third team? It could be K-State for all we know right could now. Be. It looks like could it be. very well could be. Right now it probably is. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but yeah. And Besides I think those Mississippi two. State would be a top-tier team in the Big 12. I do, too. I think yeah. it would be a top-half team. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that, that finishes us out with KSU Burke 54. Shu comes in and says, Tulane, the fake knee down. Did uh, you guys see that fake knee down? No. Is it Bush League or is it brilliant? He asked. Well, I didn't see it. So I saw, my, you know, how Twitter will like populate, you know, a highlight for you. And I saw the Tulane game winning touchdown. I thought, this must be it. So I can answer Shu's question. That wasn't it. <laughs> so I haven't seen it. But all I will I've say yeah. is, in theory, I love the idea of it. I love fake knee downs. I love <laughs> fake spikes. I mean, anything you can do, man, to, you know, that's within the rules to take advantage, I'm all for it. Did you see it? Yes. What? So explain it to me. I mean, it's exactly how you would you would. What was the scenario it? of the game? Scenario uh, tied up like, like 30, late? 32 with like yeah. Less so it was than, on their last drive. Yeah, it was on their it. last so they drive. Have, like fake they, they scored were go like to overtime. A touchdown like three plays later after that. I saw the touchdown. So was the idea they were just implying they were just going to go to overtime and take a basically knee and that kind take of a stuff? knee and go to overtime? Yeah, because yeah. it was like eighteen seconds left. And they, fa- and they was, faked a knee. And they faked a knee. Ran the quarterback quickly. Ran and got a first down. I love it. I love it. <laughs> picked up a couple yards extra after that. Even you know, love and it. I thought it was brilliant, and I thought it was funny how like the defensive line just got pancaked because they didn't see it coming, so they yeah. got pancaked. And luckily, there was like a safety that hauled, you know, behind and tackled the guy running the ball. 
It's Bush League. I think it's Bush League, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's... If anybody I thought would not have thought it was Bush League, it would have been you. I thought you know? I saw, saw a comment. I don't know where I saw mm-hmm. it. It might have been on the board. It might have been somewhere else. That later it's like, oh, well, the defense, when a knee's getting taken, is like it's supposed to be like cur- common courtesy for the defense to lay off. I, I understand. I do the- understand that. I do. But it's not – what they're not supposed to do is not fall asleep on the play. It's true. You it's know? true. I mean, it's okay to en- it's okay for them to engage with but the linemen. But you know what? They didn't, they didn't 100% I didn't fall see the asleep. Because so. had they 100% fallen asleep, he probably could have got to the end zone. Yeah. They stopped him, like, for I, I a 15-yard gain. I but. do understand that. But, I but see, I don't believe that the defense should take a play off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I remember, remember back – Back in the Texas Bowl, when K State got in some some hot water for attacking UCLA as they were taking a knee and stuff, I don't agree with that. Now I don't want to see a team diving over the pile and doing something. I understand that's dangerous, a but play, play the, the play. I, I mean, my, my favorite—I'm not making this up. My favorite PlayStation slash Xbox memory in the history of playing it was I was playing against a guy in a real game who was beating me and taking a knee. And I dove at the snap of the ball, hit his quarterback, and he fumbled, and I recovered it. <laughs> so it happened in PlayStation once. It can happen again. I think you play that stuff out. Yeah, be safe. Don't be stupid. But that, that's on the defense, man. they got to be alert. Was it Troy Paul you know? that did that? Well, that's what I mean. You think about oh, Paul I mean, Malu, Yeah. That kind of guy, yeah, he can do it. But yeah. I don't know. Like, I agree with you. Like, defense should definitely play and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't want to hear it from the offense to say, oh, you know, lay off our guys when we're taking it. I agree. I agree. It should, yeah, it should be, you know, it's the final play and stuff. But. I don't know. If, if, you're, if, it's supposed to, if it's supposed to just be, what am I trying to say here? Like, if we're supposed to just accept the game's over when there's 40 seconds left and they have to take a knee, then don't make them take a knee. You know, if you're the officials, say, nope, you don't have to take another snap. If, if they're going to make the snap happen, which they should and they do, then play it. Yeah. You know? Yep. Okay, let's see what we got from LGWKSU. K-State's not playing, so you're going as a regular fan. Mm. What game or team or stadium do you want to go? And then it says scenario, tie ball game with 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's our ball, fourth and one at the opponent 35 yard line. Wait, I think these are Wait, two this different is a, this questions. This is two different questions. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, first one. First one would be like a big, big Saturday night at LSU game. Oh, yeah. Like, I like that. you know, Bama or Auburn or somebody in there on a big Saturday night. Like, I would go, that's what I would want to see. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, probably Alabama at nighttime or I don't know. Michigan State want- <laughs> versus Arizona State. I'm actually gonna go yeah. Michigan State <laughs> yeah. at Penn State. I want I, Penn State's stadium. Like to me on TV, has always yeah. looked really cool, really it packed, does. really rowdy. Actually, I'll take it back. I think I'll that'd go be Clemson. Fun. Clemson, Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, because they go down the hill. I'm the great, I'm the Howard Rock that. entrance and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like against you know Florida State if they're good on a on a night, and yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe Virginia Tech because uh, they got a pretty cool entrance. The Inter Sandman uh, entrance at Virginia yeah. Tech's awesome. I agree. Yeah, those are all good. Those are all winners. So here's the scenario from LGWKSU. Tie ball game, 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's our ball, fourth and one at the opponent, 35-yard line. What do you call? And then it Quarterback says, sneak. edit to add this year's team, Lynchette, place kicker, Skylar at QB, et cetera. Quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak yep, that's with what Skylar I do. Thompson. Yep. That's what I do on I mean, that's my on every fourth and short, I'm running quarterback sneak. I'm not taking the ball three yards off the line of scrimmage. I'm just hoping that because my center and my line knows when it's getting snapped that they can get an, enough second of a surge because they get to go first to get you three feet. Skyler's already got a tutty from a QB yeah, sneak yeah. this year. So. I haven't seen him do this play, but give him to Jax Deneen. That Ooh. dude is massive. Mm. And just let him – Remember Bulldozer. back when they were doing direct snaps to Winston Demo? I called it the <laughs> I called it the Winnie Cat. Um, oh, what, about, what, about, what about yeah? What about Jackson? He's taking direct snaps. That would be man. fun. How about I mean, your How about your lines announcers calling every snap to the quarterback a direct snap to the quarterback? Remember we were listening to that game on the radio. Is that what they were saying? They kept saying direct snap to Stafford. It's like stop saying direct snap to Stafford. That's <laughs> silly. We, we understand they snapped it to the quarterback. Just tell us if they snap it to somebody else. But we'll talk about how much you but enjoyed there. They were great. I mean, they were. I'm, I'm not kidding. They were good announcers. I enjoyed them. They were good announcers. Other than the direct snap to the quarterback. Yeah, besides that. Yeah. But even that just added, like, you know, they, they don't take themselves something. too serious. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, next from Dallas Cat 7, we, uh, we will continue to utilize multiple RBs or will oh, one break out and take control in conference play? I, I thought about this because I try not to read these. I think once we get past this, I've missed a lot of the questions. Um, I think they kind of already have gone to – I mean, James Gilbert's getting – yeah, you know, I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but it feels like uh, sixty to seventy percent of the carries right now are snaps. At least at Mississippi State, he was on there a lot more than Harry Trotter, Jordan Brown. So I think they kind of already have 
I think it'll probably be similar to what we've seen um, with James Gilbert getting the majority of them and then Jordan Brown and Harry Trotter playing more than, you know, a stereotypical backup running back does, but probably not this this uh, evenly split 33% each of carries thing that people, or at least that I even thought was possible yeah. going into the year. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think – Logan, I mean, <laughs> Logan looked at Flanders and he said, I, I mean, no, that's the right thing to do, though. You don't have to just talk to talk. Yeah, he looked at Flanders exactly. and he said, nope, nothing I else. Love it. So, but I agree. Good. James yeah. Gilbert, I think, is already kind of taking the reins. And, yeah, Brown is more of your, your your change of speed back. And then Trotter, to me, is, yeah, a guy that fills in when each of those guys maybe needs a breather. So, um, Oh, yeah, KSU Berg 54 says that the two-lane fake knee down is both both Bush League and Brilliant. So, I, mean, I mean, that's not a terrible answer. <laughs> it's not. They also have the best set of uniforms in college football. Yeah, they do. They've got it. That, those look out, so man. sexy. The smile, yeah. the smile and wave is yep. awesome. I mean, who would have thought green and blue would go? Yep. Oh, too and, they, and they don't do too much green, you no. know, because that green wouldn't be great with but that much But they use just oh, the right amount. With that blue, lane. exactly. Way to yeah. go. Good job. Oof. Very Oof. good. So, um, in case they play too late in a few years, I'm actually sure they do. I think so. Man, we're going to enjoy that. that we, yeah, we will. Especially if. K State comes in with some alternate uniforms. Oh, then man. that game too. Yeah. Oof. I didn't know they had enough talent to beat a team like Houston. But hey, I mean, uh, when you when you look good, you play good. They look yeah, good that, all the time. Uh, Fake knees, looking good. <laughs> you know. Here's TX with a question. So he's right there is he? Where's yeah, he he's well, actually behind a pillar. You can't even see him right oh, now. Oh, he's at the. Yeah. Looks like he's sitting with Stan Weber. <laughs> well, I don't it think does. It's not. <laughs> it does look like him. Yeah. Um. TX says, name a player that hasn't really shown much yet um, that you think could be a, still be a big contributor for the rest of the year. I mean, Nick Nick Linners has two receptions, I yeah. think. I think he'll be a big factor still the rest of the year, and he already has been. I mean, he does so much for them blocking in the run game and even protecting as a max protect guy in the passing game occasionally. Um, but I'll still stick with Nick Linners. I think there'll be a game, maybe multiple games, where he has four or five catches for 70, 80 yards, maybe a touchdown, and you think, man, he was a factor in that win. So I'd still say Nick Linners. I'd have to agree. I'm going to say Walter Neal, like a guy who – Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, we're still waiting to see. I mean, he didn't play against Mississippi State. We're still waiting to see if he can be the solid corner that he was last year filling in for guys. So um, I want to see him turn it around. Uh, I, lo- I love I love Nucho Baloney might be one of my favorites. <laughs> i got to be careful, man. I know. you got to be like, very I mean, careful gotta, with his I stuff. i got to be real careful. Um, he actually said he's headed back to Manhattan after work and thinks he can make it before we're done. So I don't I mean, know. Who knows? I mean, I've heard. I've heard rumors. We just walked in. That's not him. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go to the next one. It looks like it's a bunch of just fun stuff. Good. Till <laughs> from Neely O. Might be difficult to know the answer, but where do you guys see Clyde Price ending up position-wise? I don't know. He's right. I, I, I suspect linebacker, and that's not, again, that's not me, like, hiding or passively giving off inside information. No one's told me he's moved to linebacker or anything like that. But I, I would suspect linebacker just because we saw Jacardier Wright play running back. We saw Joe Irvin play, you know, this year at running back. We know Thomas Grayson's a running back. So if all those three guys are running backs, now they'll play a bunch of running backs more than we thought. They lose at least two seniors with Jordan Brown and James Gilbert next year. So it's not like he has to move. But if I was, you know, betting my life right now, I'd say that he eventually plays linebacker for K-State. Who do you got next? Keep me going. Keep uh, it hot. Nelio kept us going saying, do you guys see Oklahoma State having a tough time stopping our run game next week? He says, I do. I see us running it right through their defense, thus setting up a burn them over the top downfield situation. Yes, I mean I think they're gonna. I, think they're, I don't think they're very good defensively. You know they're three and zero and they've played well. Um, they, if you're looking at PFF stuff, they are the number one coverage team in the Big Twelve. So their secondary with AJ Green's been really yep. good. So you could argue if you're a poke fan, which you're probably not. And if you are, why you're listening to this? <laughs> Although I like you guys, you're fine. Um, maybe they're you know the secondary is so good that they can devote a ton of attention to the running game, have yeah. a chance to slow it down. But my real answer is no. I think K State will have a lot of success running the ball against them. Uh, and still water. And I think we should be worried about stopping their run. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Yeah, I think somebody later asked about – maybe it's even in this post. It is later. But they have a lot of skill position talent on offense, and he's exactly right because, you know, he knows it's Chuba. <laughs> yeah, I okay. you know? so, to mention his name. Who's the receiver again? That's... Tylen Wallace. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to talk about them here a little later. Um, does anyone in the conference have a defense strong enough to slow down the Sooner offense – Nobody's going to stop it, but slow it down enough to pull out a victory. I don't think so. I mean, because I think they'll go undefeated and win the Big 12, so I don't think so, no. Yeah, 
I don't think so. I don't think so either. So just being honest. Yeah, Jalen Hurts just looks like a different they look quarterback. They really good. I think yeah. there's going to be times where they'll sputter it, here and there yeah. for sure. And there yeah. absolutely could be some times. Good. Thank you, though. There absolutely could be some times where yeah. OU's in some tight games, and I think they will be, but I don't think they lose any. He just read off your post like two seconds ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, so, so Nuke just walked up, poster, and I always said that. I, I mean, once in a while I'll see a post from him, and I just think, man, I hope it doesn't say what I think it could say, you know, I'm that kind of stuff. And so, and so, and so every time. But, yeah, man. Uh, there, TX sitting over there and some guys and stuff. We'll come buggy after we record. Yeah, right. So, man, hey. I don't want to go out to the folks' house yet. Yeah. Uh, the, the water is just going down enough where they're moving everything oh, back into goodness. their house. So oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to come help them move that tomorrow morning. The yep. jet right back. But, yeah. Heck yeah, so, man. Okay. Hey, we'll talk to you in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I appreciate it. What a good guy, man. We got That's awesome. Here. Whew. Nucha, man. Right. We have to meet him for the first time. We got a fan crew. Well, you know, so a couple. <laughs> what, how, does Nat, Natalie know him? Like, how do I think so? Yeah. I, think, I think I think he's friends with my brother-in-law. That's cool. You yeah. know, Neilio, Neil, not Neilio on the board. Neil, That's Neil, uh, the brother-in-law. People. So yeah. here's a question for Natalie or Scott Wildcat. Apparently, not, neither, neither are here. Of them are so. here. I mean, well, but but pretend you're in Got Natalie's it. mind for Got a minute, it. or Scott's, whichever you prefer. I'll pick Nat. Which K-State player is most likely to be a competitor on the Bachelorette? <laughs> I, I, I can take this. I can take this question. <laughs> He's so right. Go ahead. You go right ahead. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna say uh, Dalton Schoen. I feel like that's like the stereotypical. I mean, the yeah, st- you he's know, awfully good looking. He's got the, big biceps. Yep, and he's he's built. He's got a chiseled jawline. Yeah. Uh, name's Dalton. I mean, that and, sounds. Yeah, I, mean, and, yeah. I mean, as uh, as and I don't bad mean, as it I didn't sounds, mean Dalton in a like a yeah. talking down way, I mean, like in a classy guy sounding yep. way, like yeah. Nick Lenners would be in that discussion too. I know I'm just listing off just good looking white men, but you have like, a t- I was gonna say you have a type. What's like Denzel guess, Goolsby? But I'm <laughs> also like just Parker. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm like, also just pointing out that the Bachelor or Bachelorette should maybe be a bit more progressive with who they cast. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, mean, I just I don't think you have it in you to see a cross racial <laughs> relationship. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's it's, well, funny. It's, it's funny uh, because he's in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scott Wildcat does come in here, and uh, he actually says that Nick Lenners or Denzel Goolsby would yeah. be good options. So, yep. I mean, and then basketball, he said it'd have to be X, which is interesting. The Cardi Jada, man. I mean, I would think Cardi, because he, he says it would be X, but he would need to turn up his charisma. Uh, yeah, go with Cardi, a guy who's already got some yeah, charisma. Yeah, he's already got him. him. I mean, what about Sean? Yeah, what about Mason? <laughs> what about Mason? Yeah, like, <laughs> Send uh, the twin brothers to the show. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they, they could have a reality show called show, Shown the Girls Around. <laughs> and it's those two just showing around a group of girls, and they pick which shown they like better. <laughs> I mean, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's uh, good stuff. Okay. Um, here's Guns N' Roses 1 asks, if you're throwing a tailgate, what's on the menu? I mean, I haven't done one for so long. Well, first of all, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't be responsible for any of it, you know. But I'm <laughs> saying things that I would be excited to come and see would be jalapeno poppers. I think yep. those are really, really, really good. I would hope that you have some chicken wings. I really, really like chicken wings. It's easier for me to eat those than, like, put together a burger and that kind of stuff. That would be exciting. I really like sweets a lot. So maybe, you know, some cookies. But not just, like, regular cookies. Like, something fun with them, you know. But, I mean, so, I mean, cookies. Um, Jalapeno poppers and wings. <laughs> That's all you need. Those three things. Uh, it's from anywhere. From anywhere. I mean, whatever you want to do. Yeah. I, I do. Uh, from Ivy. Kansas City barbecue. <laughs> either from people's. Uh, or Kansas City Joe's or um, okay. Q39. Okay. That would be good. That yeah, would be good. good. Yeah. Give me. Give me just. I just need bratwurst there. Dude, I love. I don't I like bratwurst. Like bratwurst. Some mustard. That's like all it. I need. Don't like it. Um, follow up question uh, about the tailgate question from, but this is from Arn Anderson rules. Double he a. says. What's on the 2019 KSO tailgate menu? That's a, that's a 100% Natalie Hall question. It's a great I mean, and question. I know, yeah. I know I said I was going to answer questions on she here. She liked not, it, too, on the board. Dodge. So. Oh, she saw she, it. She so saw good. it. Yep. So good. Then I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Purple South has, a, has one serious question and one fun question. Okay. Start with the serious one. Which position group would an injury have the most impact on? Like, I'm going to dodge the, uh, the cop-out answer, which is quarterback. <laughs> and go, and, I mean, go. I mean, and not, I'm not making fun of the question, but yeah. like, if I wanted to be a jerk, I'd just say quarterback. Yeah. Uh, I still think I still think linebacker. I mean, Cody Fletcher should be back, but he hadn't played it down yet this year because of injury. The linebackers have been really good, but they've only got three guys, not counting Fletcher, they want to play. 
So you take one of those guys out, and you're at just two. If they stayed healthy, they'd be fine. But I think that's the one that can least afford to lose somebody. I'd have to go with your uh, yeah. answer. I think yeah. linebacker is yeah. the right call. And then, I mean, offensive line, I think I could make yeah. a case for. I nope. mean, yeah, depends who it was, yeah, too. I mean, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But but I think linebacker is the number one spot that you'd yeah. wouldn't want. So fun question from, okay. from Purple South. If you got a free punch, no retaliation, <laughs> and no consequences on any Big 12 football head coach, I who mean, would you swing on and why? <laughs> I mean, there's, I can't. I mean, like, I can't answer it. I mean, like, I'm trying to think of a way to award it to where I feel like I'm not saying, oh, I'd punch so-and-so in the face. I mean, like, <sighs> I mean, okay, so let me, let me talk this out. I'd probably say Lincoln Riley. I have nothing against Lincoln Riley. I think he's probably the best offensive mind in football today. I like the way he talks to the media. But I feel like he's going to be just a gosh darn superstar someday, like a Super Bowl champion coach and that kind of stuff. So someday, like 20 years from now, I could tell my kids, hey, I punched Lincoln Riley. I'd feel <laughs> really cool. So even though I love Lincoln Riley, and he's probably my second favorite coach, the big pull behind that climbing fellow at K-State, give me Lincoln Riley because I feel like he gives me the best story. And he's really young. You say this together? And, and he's really, on, and he's really young and healthy, and it wouldn't hurt him. You know? So. You want to say one name together on the count of three? Uh, yeah. One, two, three. Gundy. Les Miles. <laughs> I thought you guys were both going to say John Stamos, but you didn't, you didn't do that. Well, hey, how about that? We got three different answers. Why, why, why Gundy? Why Gundy? I hate his hair. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know, fair enough. Les Miles, Les Miles, man. I mean, similar to your thing saying, I could tell my kids, I... I punched Les Miles in the face <laughs> while he was Jeez at Kansas. Ways. And by the way, he also is a national title winner. You're right. He would tell you that <laughs> so as he did it. He'd be like, I did win a national title at LSU before you do this. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. We I would know. never do that. I wouldn't though. punch we're anyone. Nice. Yeah, we're very nice. And plus, yeah, I mean, I bet you Les is a, a good guy. Probably a nice man. He absolutely has been annoying, too, when it comes to him yeah. talking about. But it's not to, his fault. But it know? is. He's just doing you know, his best. You're right. You know? Good point. <laughs> Let's move on. Um... Oh, that's emphatically says I would agree on Goolsby for a bachelorette. Huh, that's about interesting. <laughs> <laughs> emphatically, she says. Huh? All right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, a little um, crush in there, maybe. yeah, a little bit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Purple Sage seventy four says that was a fun one. Yeah, Purple Sage seventy four says since it is the bye week, how do you think the men's basketball team will shape up? I mean, that's a pretty pretty broad question. I, know. I think you're probably better to try to answer it first. You spent a lot of time around the guys in the last you know week or so. I mean, so let me let me let me, let me narrow let me finish the off his question. Oh, he's got yes, more. He's got, well, I thought it's, that was it's, the whole well, I thought so too, but it's 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 he stopped. separated. Did he not stop? did he not let I absolutely say that? did, and I looked up uh, it as well. I separated into three spaces. So at first it says, "What do you think of the team this year? How will it shape up?" Then he says, "We know X, Cardi, and Mac start, but then what?" And Dejuan McGurl, SNW Sloan, I worry about the bigger guys. Someone needs to take a big step. So let's all in there together. And now well, let's, let's talk let's, about let's, it. Let's, let's narrow it down then. And I'll ask you, yeah. and then I can say, oh, I disagree or whatever. So if we're going to go with them, and I agree that Mac, X, and Cardi will start. And then again, does he mean the season opener? Does he mean, the, let's, let's go ahead and say, like, not. When we're answering this, we mean, like, who will their starting lineup be for the majority of the season? Majority not, not of the season. Not game one, not the last game, but if you look at some sheet that lists the starters, majority, you yep. know, who started most of the games. So if you got those three, who are you adding to? I'm adding, starters? it's got to be a healthy guy, but uh -huh. uh, David Sloan, I, I think, ends too. up starting at the point. I would, too. Um, and then, I guess, the one other guy that would start is, I don't know, I think Cardi. I love this. You know, the one other guy would be, I don't you know. I'm going to give Mike. I mean, I, yeah. it's hard for me to say right now. I know they don't want to start X at the four, but I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to think of the guy who's going to start at the four right now and me thinking, is it going to be Montavious or Antonio as f true freshmen starting majority of the year? Could could happen, I'm, but I'm right gonna, now I don't see it. I'm going to give some uh, a cop-out answer, but I kind of believe it. I would agree with Sloan at point guard, and then I will say – we're, getting, we're doing this. You're looking at the end of the year, this magical, yep. you know, who started the most games thing. I'll say Montavious Murphy. Yep. I don't think he will play amongst the top five minutes on the team. Maybe not even the top seven. Maybe he will, but I think he will get the kind of token start there. Uh, one, to not not to yeah. not start X at power forward, which uh -huh. you said you aren't going to do. Yep. And I think he'll be the best option there. I think Monty is going to be a great player. He'll play minutes this year. I, I'm not trying to talk down of him. I think he'd be the other guy who starts the most, but I don't think you will look at him as a – I think Mike McGurl, for example, will play more minutes. Yeah. 
but I think Monty will probably start more. Games. I do like that answer. Yeah. I like that answer a lot because I hope it happens. I hope one of these true freshmen can step up and start, and they're probably – they're both going to have to play a lot of minutes at that spot. Dejuan Gordon probably plays more minutes than him, too. I know. You know? And, and, so, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. And Dejuan did point out to me, too, he's, in practice he's noticed that it seems like they're going to have to take majority because he even admitted that Levi is more of a five than he is a right. four. So right. you're going to see Mack and Levi like hold down that five position more than anyone else. And then, yeah, it is going to have to be those two guys stepping up. Yep. But there's a lot of ways. Then I mean, it's, we don't get the basketball, but you can slide, of course, X to the four yep. and then play – Dejuan at the three, or you can play Mike at the two inside Cardi. There's a there's a lot you can do. Yep. Um, they have a lot of versatility, but yeah, it is it is a question around the big guys beyond Mac for sure, no doubt. Uh, is Dejuan actually six three? I saw him walking around campus. That dude looks six five. No, but, he's oh, taller yeah. than six yeah. three. I don't know how tall he is, but I'm with you. I would bet you any, he's not six three. He's at least six four, maybe six four and a half. Yep. Maybe it's the fro, and, but and I think he's one of those guys too who's maybe like gonna stick with the six three as long as he can, you know? <laughs> yep. So like he looks like a better athlete yep. and he's dunking on people. Look he's six three, was like six five with long arms. <laughs> yeah. I mean he's not six three, but but yes, that's a good point you bring up. He's not six three. And he has very long arms and too. And very talented yeah. as we've been told and seen and yeah it's gonna be fun to see him. Yeah. Uh, getting taken under X's wing and stuff this year. But uh, next we got K Style 79. He says, One, do you feel we lose any coordinators in the next few years to other programs? Ne- say that again, next few years? Next few years. Any I'm gonna, coordinators? I'm going to be just difficult and say that means three. Okay. And I'll say no. I don't think K State will lose a coordinator in the next three years. If you said four, I'd be way less confident. Um, but I will say no. I'll say no. When they have already lost it, I mean, they, these coordinators had a better stint with North Dakota State. Yeah. I mean, some of them have moved from different programs, but most of them come from North Dakota State. They won right. national championships there. You'd think right. they would have left from there. But so he's implying, yeah, they already would have had, you know, opportunities to go to. Yeah. They probably would have. Which you know Hazleton I mean? so, did. In Hazel, that, right, yeah. But, Right, from Wyoming. But, yeah, yeah, now from Wyoming to K-State. So, yeah, I mean, this is, I think, a really good job. They love what they're doing right now. So I'm with you. Three years, I think, is too short for them to leave. I think so. Will Nike have new uniform designs completed for next season? Uh, if I'm guessing, I'll say yes. That's a guess. I'm not I'm not hiding info in there. A guy uh, that spent I, the night at the, yeah, yeah. the I mean, Bosco's boys. I think... Uh, I think they will. I mean, I, and I don't know. I don't know how different they'll be. And when you say new designs, I, I don't think they're going to change the look up very much. But I, but yeah, if, I, if we're forced to guess, I bet the uniforms do look a little different next year. I mean, didn't Climate already say something that's going to take a year for the new right. jerseys yeah. to come it basically together? Basically, does yeah. Can we please add some type of graphic so oh, that yes. ugly slash bland roll up door the team enters the field from? I know exactly what he's talking about. What? It's more or less. It looks like a garage door. Yeah, it is a garage yeah. door. Uh, I agree, and you know what? I'm not. I think Bill Snyder family <laughs> stadium looks great these days. They've done so much great work to it. I don't like to nitpick, but I do agree. It looks like a garage door. Like, yeah, throw a power cat on there. Maybe throw a KSO on there. Maybe <laughs> we go paint one on there after the show. Yep, and yep. they won't take it off. They will, and they will um, have no clue. Yeah, who's who's? Uh, who I think I agree. I think they need to do something to it. I agree. I agree. They need to do something to it, and I. I think they need to have it roll up faster because yeah. I saw one time a player almost hit his head on the I, it was rolling up too slow yeah I wish it was more like big giant doors they could open up or something I don't know I like but they already got that they do in, inside right yeah so, yeah I don't want to complain about it I like it but yeah it looks like a garage door I like I like the look I mean if you're gonna add a graphic it better be really sweet looking yeah if it ends yeah. up being something lame then I'd rather it be just the cool looking yeah. to me it's just a classic look Guns N' Roses won. Points speared, according to Matt Hall's bookie site, for the rest of the matchups. <laughs> what games are we the dog in? Uh, that's a good question. So what games will K-State be underdogs in? Yeah, I think that's what it's trying to o- ask. Oklahoma and Texas, they'll be underdogs in both those. They'll be an underdog at Oklahoma State this coming Saturday. Well, however you say that now. Next Saturday, you know when it is if you're listening to this show. But I don't know. I mean, right now, if I'm making lines, I'm not sure they would be a dog in any other game. Uh, I don't think they – again, right now, I don't think they'd be a dog to Iowa State at home. I don't think they'd be a dog at Texas Tech. Oh, he does um, ask for point spreads, too. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me rattle this down. Okay, I mean, these are all guesses. Uh, at Oakie State, six-point underdog. Um, I might say some of these out of order, too. We don't have anything in front of me. But Baylor at home, four-point favorite. TCU at home, two-point favorite. 
Oklahoma at home, 14-point underdog. At Texas, 11-point underdog. Uh, at Kansas, 8-point favorite. At West, no, home versus West Virginia, 9-point favorite. Uh, at Texas Tech, 2-point favorite. Home against Iowa State, 3-point favorite. So that's what I would say. That's the lines I would give right now. And that's exactly what they will be because you are very good at this. I've actually, <laughs> a number of lines this year, I've nailed on the dot before they come out. So you write, write those all down, put them in your little notes, <laughs> and then go from there. Well, I think this next game against Oklahoma State, at Oklahoma State really matters a lot. For, and I think if they win this game, they're going to be the favorite in just about every game. But they would, Texas, I think they would be. And Oklahoma, if they lose this game, I don't think they're a favorite. Then those games, you know, the the at Texas Tech, the Iowa State at home, those that they may not be favored in. You're right. Do you think they, if they lost to Oklahoma State, do you think they'd be a favorite at home to Baylor? I I do, just because they're at home. But I bet it'd be really. I mean, I always said four anyway. I mean, so like, yeah. So I think uh, it's not crazy to say they wouldn't be. I, but I'm I, I'm I'm just in my head defaulting to then whatever the lines are is what's going to happen too. I don't think I'm going to pick them to lose to Oklahoma State, but I'm assuming since Oklahoma State's favored, that means Oklahoma State wins that game. I still think K-State would be favorite against Baylor, but I think it would be really close. I think it would be a really low line. Yeah. Only a few more left. Actually, only two more left. And all, then, how, long I know. how long is the show going? Have we got any it's time all, on it's this? Almost, it's almost 46. Up to, yeah, 46 minutes. Oh, we're doing so, okay. Yeah, I think yeah, we're doing we're fine, fine for a, yeah. a Q&A episode. Um, have we mentioned that we're at Tallgrass Tap House? We have. Oh, we have. I we've eaten. And all, yeah, we're yeah, fine. You're good. I haven't, I haven't said You're Harry's good. or Bourbon and Baker yet, but we'll say all those places again yeah, yeah. at the end. But They renewed today. I would say that on here. Like, Appreciate Harry's, yep. Bourbon and Baker, Tallgrass. Uh, they're going to be our sponsor again for another year. Of course, with their other sponsors who are on our board and uh, people say Bank, Legacy. It's really nice of them to renew. They've been very nice to us. And uh, we ain't lost their business yet. So, yeah, hey, I know. way to go, Flanders. How about it? Yeah. <laughs> Bad News Jimmy asks, uh, what is your shoe size? 12. 11. 11. Okay, so we're all. Are you an 11? Yeah. Over there? Yeah, man, Logan's not very but tall I, for an eleven. I, know, I think I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty a, impressive. I'm an eleven in Nike, and they really run um, small, so probably a ten, ten and a half. Man, yeah, I, I'd love to say I'm a twelve and a half or a thirteen, but if I put on a thirteen, like it's too big. I like being eleven. I wish I was a thirteen though. It sounds <laughs> it's big. Solid. Yeah. I feel like you can find my shoes anywhere. Yeah. Black Emo finishes it off and uh-huh. just asks, uh, "Do you guys want to hang out sometime?" <laughs> I do. I believe I know you know who this is. I'm not going to say his name because you don't want it out there. But I see him on the YouTube, on the Twitter. Uh, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you the address. Send me a DM. <laughs> I would invite you over right now. Um, I think hanging out would be a really good time. Yeah. And we're probably going to hang out with TX and Nooch. And he's, TX got a friend with him. And these guys that are kind of spattered. Splattered, spitter pattern. Spreader. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Spread. That's not what I was trying to say. You were looking for a fancy word, like yeah, um, <laughs> sporadic, like sporadically located <laughs> yeah, throughout the bar. Yeah, I love it. Took about 20 <laughs> seconds to get it. I've really only had Pepsi. I'm doing just fine. So, yeah. So that finishes off with the Q and A edition on the bye week uh, of the KSO show, brought to you by Legacy Insurance and People State Bank. And Tallgrass Tap House, Harry's, and Bourbon and Baker. Again, all those places. Go to them. Be there. We're going to spend the day eating, banking, and getting insurance. <laughs> I, would tell you, I would tell you to start at, you know, probably at Harry's. Cause I bet yeah. they've got some nice, like, brunch typey. I know they maybe don't, but they have, like, a cafe and, like, sure, a jelly type sure. thing. So I'd go there. And then I would come, I'd probably go get my bank, my, you know, the insurance stuff taken care of first. Um, because you don't want to worry about that. Yep. Then you go to lunch here yep. at Tall Grass. I would say not terribly busy sometimes at noon on a weekday. Then people say Bank I know has at least two locations in Manhattan. So depending what what you want to do after that, you go there in the afternoon. Yep. And then you yep. wrap up your day at, at Bourbon and Baker. <laughs> you have yourself a, what do they call a GFBC, yep. a good bourbon and coke or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe you have like one of the little like uh, um, biscuit chicken biscuit oh. things they have on there with the stuff on there. And then you call it a night. I mean, what a what a day, you know? Oh, those cheddar prime rib biscuits. Oh, oh my god, too. they got yeah. so much good food over yeah. at Bourbon and Baker, Tallgrass, Harry's, yeah. all those places. Check them out. You got any last words, Logan Mance? No last words for me. <laughs> all right, said, well, nope. <laughs> let's wrap this thing up. Thanks for listening to the KSO Show with Dale Hall, Logan Mance, and Flando. If you tell your friends, I'd appreciate it. Tell up.